Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this stream on uh, uh, K0S in production. So basically, we'll be talking about uh, K0S and its features and uh, you know some of the production use cases, production checklist, uh, how to set up the kind of HA thing. And again, we'll go with the flow as as the community wants. So we'll try to you know uh, ask uh, the Q&A that you always do. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited for this one because K-series is a Kubernetes distribution. Uh, I was a very, I mean, I was one of the first ones to write on this uh, very early on. And uh, to be honest, it uh, that particular blog has the maximum number of hits uh, that I have. So uh, I think it's really mm -hmm. interesting. So it, I will uh, I'll just share the blog link as well. So there it is. Yeah. So yeah, those who are new to the channel, uh, my name is Sayam Pathak. I am CNCF ambassador, and uh, I run this YouTube channel with amazing people like you are seeing on the screen right now. Uh, and I make sure uh, you we all learn together. Uh, so I try to do as many streams as I can uh, with the open source community on the great open source tools, uh, so that we can learn from them. We can you know uh, try to implement them, and obviously as a community, we can contribute back to those particular projects and products. So uh, very glad uh, that you all are here. And we have some swag giveaways today. So we'll be uh, you know, giving away three swags. So make sure you share uh, this stream uh, to your social media channels. And I will paste a link in the chat that you need to fill. It's a very simple form with your name, email, and Twitter. If it's there, if it's not there, you can just type any. We need some way to contact you. So we have Lens Hoodies 3. Uh, to be one, and uh, the giveaway will happen at the end of the stream. So keep sharing uh, the content that you learn. Uh, we'd love to hear. Uh, after we also people have been doing like kind of short summary, Twitter thread summary. So we, I, I would love to see those uh, at the end of the session. Like what all you learned from this particular session, and you know what were the uh, good things uh, that you could make out. So yeah. Uh, I'm glad to announce that uh, uh, I'm joined today by, uh, you know, uh, UC and Miko. Uh, so Miko is uh, uh, princip uh, the product manager and uh, UC is uh, principal engineer at Mirantis. Uh, so uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Miko and UC. Yeah, all right. So I'm Miko and I'm working at Mirantis and working with uh, around this Kubernetes development and k zeros development. So yeah, very interesting to to be here, and uh, yeah, let's have a good good session. Hey, I'm 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 Jussi, and then, and as 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 with Pico, I'm working at at Mirantis with this mostly with the K K zeros stuff and everything everything around it. So uh, uh, I've, I've been actually working with Kubernetes also already in my past for quite a quite a few years, and and. Uh, like we just discussed with before the the stream actually went live, it's just, the, the, the Kubernetes is a is a fun thing in a, in a way that uh, even though you've been you've been working for years and years with it, every single week you learn new tricks and details and whatnot, and 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 at some day something some small detail somewhere might bite your behind. So that's it's fun. Cool. So again, just before starting, uh, if you are new, just subscribe to the channel, uh, sayampartak.com slash YouTube. If you are seeing on Twitch, then sayampartak.com slash TV. And uh, again, we have three swag giveaways. So please fill the form, else there's no way that we can you know, uh, pick you as the winner. So you have to fill the form. And uh, uh, yeah, K0S. Uh, so we'll try one, you know, we'll try one uh, fun question, like not a fun question, but a difficult one for Miko and UC. Uh, so K0S versus K3S. So we'll we'll uh, make make it happen at the end, kind of at the end of the stream. But yeah, I'll, I'm definitely going to ask that. So I'm telling it, you know, beforehand. Yeah. So that can say, yeah. Can yes. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the question everybody always has. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So let's begin with uh, you know uh, the the first and foremost like what actually is you know K zero S and uh, where did it came from? So that would be really interesting to hear out first. Yeah. All right. So I could actually share a couple of slides here sure. as well. So all right. So starting with um, 
some introduction. So K zeros is the is the zero friction Kubernetes. So basically targeting for for many different cloud environments, but also a bare metal edge and and IoT deployments. So so the aim is that users can run K zeros basically in all their Kubernetes use cases. And K zeros is a certified Kubernetes meaning that the applications behave in the same way as has in other cube distros and it's easy to migrate applications to, to case roles and between the distros and and case roles works nicely with lens so lens is a kind of natural choice for for monitoring and dashboard solution for for case roles and of, uh, of, of course it has to yeah. be always mentioned that uh, that the lens team here is sort of a, like a sister team with us so so we we do have close collaboration with those folks and and yeah that there was a stream on lens already that we have done so if you are interested in learning more i'll just drop a link in the chat all right then a couple of other items so so zero freaks and what we mean here that uh, that the, the, the plan is that it's very easy to get started with k0 so the goal is that basically anyone without the special skills or deep uh, technical knowledge on on kubernetes can can easily get started and the zero depths is, uh, is mostly about the single binary. So the distribution distribution method of K0 is it's a single file which includes all the needed software packages and, and dependencies. And this makes it easy to deploy and upgrade K0. And for example, when you need a, a security patch that can be that can be fixed directly into case of binary and then it's easy to just replace the, the binary and go ahead and you are you are fully up to date and then it's a, it's an open source project so it can be used freely and it's a, it's easy very easy to give it a try and then for users who need additional services then mirantis provides a technical support and and professional services yeah that was the that was the introduction part basically cool i think that's that really makes sense because like you know at first like what actually k0 is is so it's basically zero friction i think that's what uh, from the name it it gets that zero friction and uh, zero dependency so you can you know uh, basically you just need a host kernel and every, everything uh, it, it's there uh, you can with the minimum os host dependencies you can easily spin up k0s and uh, yeah it's open source so that's what that's why it is here. So it's open source. You can freely use it. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty neat introduction. So please keep asking the questions if you have any uh, regarding the uh, regarding whatever we are talking about. So now, like, why K0s? Why this came into mind? We already have Kubernetes, and we have some of the other distributions. Like for local, we have Kind, and we have Minikube. And why why we want why we want K0s? Why why that thought came into the mind or what all uh, things you thought were missing pieces that you are trying to uh, fix? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And we have a, we have a couple of points here. First of all, we have seen uh, that many customers needing a versatile like, a cube solution, meaning a solution that can that can run on very different environments. And, and for example, install Kubernetes on a on a small IoT or industrial type of devices which might have very limited memory or CPU. And uh, yeah, then we have uh, we have seen different uh, control plane isolation type of requirements or how to place the control plane and worker nodes, uh, even to separate networks. So there we have a strong solution. We will talk about that one more. And then we have seen a need, need for operating system independence. So basically a, a distro which could, uh, can include all the dependencies and can easily run on different Linux, Linux distros without any, let's say, preliminary uh, installation of, of needed packages and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted to build a pure kind of a clean upstream Kubernetes disk, so where there is no need for forking of any kind. So all the latest Kubernetes features are always available, and and it also saves time, saves our time to not to do any any forking or changes, and it's also we consider it like a more 
let's say, a less error-prone solution to implement like this. And yeah, this kind of uh, destroys, uh, I think, a very efficient base for then many higher level solutions. And then, yeah. One, 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 one practical example of what we mean by this, 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 mm. this possible trouble of, of the, the, the kind of the uh, depending on, on OS level packages. So, so without, of course, I don't have the possibility to, to mention names of, 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 of customers and companies, but, but there, there was a case where, where uh, the platform on, on, on the customer was actually having trouble. There was performance issues running containers and the, the underlying fault actually turned out to be a library provided by the OS level which affects all this upper layer of con con control uh, containers and everything. So it's a, it's a tough situation for, for companies who are selling that platform when you, when you have to then, then think about, okay, who do I call at Canonical to, to, to make a fix on the, on the library, one, some specific library on the, on the OS side. Yeah, that is interesting, like uh, the um, uh, very interesting use case. So OS level dependencies can definitely cause issues and uh, obviously are hard to debug when you are dealing with uh, already, well, you're already dealing with a complex system, which is Kubernetes. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that that is that makes sense. So when you say like pure upstream Kubernetes distribution and you say like all the features are there in, in whatever in, in the vanilla Kubernetes, so it's, it's complete like you we don't miss any of the features that that people can use with the regular kubernetes uh, k8s right yes yes so okay. the, the 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 only change we do is is that we compile the the kubernetes components with uh without the building cloud providers because the upstream is anyway ripping those out already, so so we decided that okay, we'll we'll sort of jump the gun a bit and 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 we we build it with that with the I can't remember what the pill tag was named, but this uh, provider less I think it was. Okay, and when you say control plane isolation, uh, so that that just means like no workload will be able to schedule on your control plane. Uh, but if if anybody wants to run kind of a single node uh, single node installation, so then then obviously the control plane has to be because it's on the same node, so it is schedulable, yep. right? So that has to yes. be schedulable. Yes, yeah. yes. In that yeah. case, yes. Yeah, okay. we have that's, strong, that, yeah. that's not the that that's not the default option. So so you have to specifically go and say that, say that that okay, I want to run the worker also on this controller node. No, but that as that is a, as a uh, you know that is a good practice that control plane isolation is there because uh, uh, we should not run the the actual workloads on the control plane so that our, our Kubernetes cluster do not collapse and it's still there uh, to be it's still functional. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that that's not what you get with uh, with like like when you when you spin up the cluster with kubeadm for example. You yep. you 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 have kube that you have the container runtime and everything running on that. On the controller, and that's not what happens with K zero. So, okay, mm. that is nice. Like you don't have the the CRI, so you won't be uh, able to schedule anything. And I think control yep. plane isolation is something that the cloud providers also provide when with, with their customized distribu distribution that they have. So uh, having it as a default option in an open source version that everyone can use uh, is neat. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And it really allows this, this what 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 Mika said that this this like, like versatility on the deployment options, like like we've seen the the in 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 requirements in discussions with our customer base and 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 different projects. So so the the one of the kind of I'm not sure what I what I call it typical, but but uh, one kind of uh, sort of typical use case for that is is like like you have some some IoT type of type of use case where you where you run this like like uh, iot type devices collecting data on your say on your factory for example but then of course on on on, on these industrial factories you don't have capacity to run like real vms and real hardware this like typical hardware where you run this control plane stuff so with this control plane isolation what we can actually do we can actually spin up the, the controllers on a cloud provider and the workers can actually run in your private data center, which might be like a industrial factory with some industrial PCs and whatnot. 
Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can we can even get back to that one soon. But but okay, then a little bit what we have under the hood in the in the case zero side. So so basically we have um, as a default choice is container D selected as as a runtime, and then for networking it it comes with Cube Router and Calico. You can select which one you want to have, but uh, and then the etcd is the default data store, and it's the default for multi-node clusters, like the the real default. But then if you use this single option, then we actually go for this SQLite because because you don't need uh, data replication in in that kind of cluster. And all of them can be easily swapped. So, so these are what comes with the default if you don't change any configuration. But, uh, but it's it's very easy to to bring your own or, or change those as well. And then, maybe what is related here is then actually that uh, that the extension side. So, Casey Rose Core has only the only the necessary parts, kind of as mentioned, runtime networking and data store. But then for for the additional extensions we have we have taken the approach that uh, to support basically any extension not just uh, one or two selected ones but uh, and what we mean here for example ingress controllers or load balancers or, or storage solution so those we don't pre-select kind of for for k zeros and um, yeah so and we we include the tooling for these extensions, so make it easy for the users. So with the, this inbuilt manifest deployer or Helm charts, it's easy to include all, all the or let's say any Kubernetes extension to to K zeros. And yeah, we have a couple of couple of tutorials here, also to also to get started. Uh, cool. Can you can you go to the previous slide? Yeah. So, okay, so basically uh, when, when we have the K0S as a distribution or a binary, so we get out of the box uh, container D as a runtime, cube router and Calico for the networking and uh, ETCD and Kine for data store. So they, they both are there or, or is it like only one or depending on like what you choose? Only one is basically there, and if you if you have a multi-node cluster, you only have etcd, HCD and cube right. and cube router. If you start with the default config, fully with default, but then if you if you change a couple of lines in the config file, then you then you can easily switch it to Calico and awesome. yeah, it's a yeah. Can you go to the next one now? Yes. So uh, we have the add-ons. So when you say the add-ons, uh, I mean, are, is there like uh, the in the configuration itself you can specify the add-ons? Uh, they're natively you can specify, or is it like a, a regular Helm deploy or a regular manifest deploy? Yeah, the Helm chart, Helm support is included for the K0s config file. So when you are, let's say, rebooting or, or yeah, bootstrapping the cluster, if you if you specify the Helm charts on the config file, they are they are automatically deployed. So you can in this way automate the cluster setup and with all your all the needed applications, for example. And the manifest deployer is actually a tooling. We have a certain um, let's say certain directory configured and if you place the the manifest the yaml files there they are applied automatically so it's uh, roughly the same same behavior as you you type kubectl apply but this just happens automatically and and you can kind of uh, kind of pre-configure your your cluster and the applications with these these tools yeah I, okay that is nice like you can pre-configure some of the uh, basic tooling uh, yeah. like the like you need prometheus monitoring uh, yeah. or, or you need some sort of you know basic stuff uh, obviously you when, whenever you install kubernetes you install some applications on top of that you obviously do because of some of some of the other needs so you can uh, pre-configure that with the with the helm and manifest deployer and have those ready even their cluster is ready yep nice yep. that's that's that that's exactly the motivation because Pretty, pretty much like like uh, like in an organization where you deploy where you have multiple different Kubernetes clusters, you always have the same sort of base set of tooling there. You have Prometheus, you have some Ingress, you have this and that. So these are the, the, this these extensions are the are the way to push those and 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 have everything last like like running out of box. 
Mm, that is nice. So do we have an architecture diagram like for for K0S, like how does it look like? How does the flow look like? We have, um, I don't know, do we actually have an architecture picture direct, but we have, uh, we can talk about this control plane isolation and um, yeah, we have uh, yeah, that's some what, pictures that's what there. I wanted to know, like the control plane isolation is a pretty cool feature. And I think there have been multiple questions in the chat as well yep. regarding how the, how the control plane is isolated. So I think, uh, yeah, if we can talk a little, uh, that would be really interesting. Yes, so let's jump jump into there. So, so first of all, the, the kind of the, the general benefits about the control plane isolation. So, so yeah, what is, uh, what is it all about? So, control controllers and worker nodes are kind of placed separately in the in the network, and and control plane can be running as you see. Um, meant so that it can be run separately and it can be run for example in the public cloud and then the workers can run for example in the edge location or they can be even in the private network to to have your application kind of kind of separated and uh, so this one of the benefits is to that it helps securing the network kind of that you can have a separate firewalls to, to limit kind of the attack surface. And the control plane can be configured to allow only the, the ports needed for cluster management. And on the other hand, the worker firewalls can be then uh, then configured with the completely different ports that, uh, that the applications, applications need. So, yeah. And, uh, one more benefit is that you can then scale, of course, those separated. So when you need more, more CPU for your applications, you just scale the, the worker side and, and the controller can probably be, be the same. And so, of, of, yeah. of, of course, yeah. from the one, one of the one of the main benefits is of course from the scheduling point of view. Because if you think about the think about the typical case where you have the where, where you set up the cluster with, for example, a cube ADM. You get the, the the CRI running. You get the kubelet running on the controller nodes, but they are just tainted. So it's it's super easy to get around those taints and actually schedule basically any workload onto the controllers. I mean, the the as 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 fancy and as 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 complex the Kubernetes role-based access control is, there is no way to to, to say that okay, who can schedule workloads to where. So. The the, the 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 sort of a full isolation really set, really really puts that into in into place that that because you don't run container D or kubelet or anything on the on the controllers so therefore therefore you can't schedule anything there either on purpose or by accident which I, I believe anybody working with Kubernetes have done accidental scheduling and accidental deletion of stuff so that's not happening yeah. anymore. Yeah, that was the main kind of the unique uh, K0's uh, differentiation here that the kubelet is not running in the controller. So, so it's impossible to schedule pods on the controller nodes. That's, I think we make it, uh, make it very easy for the users that if you deploy it like that, you don't have this, this uh, potential problems here. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Like uh, uh, the complete isolation is definitely a cool feature, in my opinion. I mean, uh, people people might have different ones, but I think this is really cool feature where uh, you don't have kubelet running. And like I was telling you, so basically, what happens in the cloud providers itself? So when when you are using their their you know uh, managed Kubernetes services, so you don't you don't get the master access. So that's because the control plane is isolated. You the because that is under their control. And they have done extra customization and all those things, which K0S has also done to make the control plane, you know, unschedulable. So you don't have the kubelet already there. So you cannot, you, you don't need any installation, but you won't be able to schedule the workloads. So here also in K0S, so you won't be able to schedule the workloads on the on the control plane node, which is which is really cool uh, because you you don't want to, and you should not. So you should the the worker nodes uh, are basically are the are the actual ones where your actual workloads or the applications or the websites, whatever you're trying to run, should be running. So, so that, 
I mean, uh, obviously the the um, the line is very correct. Like it can be error prone. Uh, you can do the tame set toleration, uh, but it can be error prone. Uh, also, the R back can be error prone. You have different R backs for different applications, and that can also do the control plane scheduling. So that can be a little bit, you know, um, tough. And someone gets access, and they can do this and that. But if you if your control plane is totally isolated, you you won't be able to schedule the workload. So which is pretty pretty neat in that particular layer. Yeah. Mm. And maybe one more item actually here is I mentioned this these firewalls. So basically basically when you when you have the isolation in place, you can actually have a have a firewall here in front of the the worker nodes and the, the inbound direction can be blocked here. The inbound can be can be even fully blocked, but uh, but we have this um, this connectivity and agent connectivity agent and server logic here. So it's always the worker node who who connects to and finds the controller. And this way, actually, we call it the calling home function kind of. And actually, we can achieve the both way tunnel when we just have an outbound access here from the worker node, and they can they can find the, the controller. So this this also helps in the in these different network scenarios where the where the worker nodes uh, needs to be placed somewhere else than the than the control plane. Cool. Uh, so basically, why is the connectivity um, server there? What is the role of that? The, the 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 connectivity server on the control plane is is terminating the connections from the from the agents on the on the worker node. So, so, so one 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 way to think about this this whole connectivity server agent thing is 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 like like think about them as as these typical SSH reverse tunnels that you use with SSH connections. So basically, the agent calls home to the server, and then the Kubernetes API will actually use that tunnel when it communicates with the kubelet on the, onto the worker nodes. When you do like get logs, exec into exec into pods and 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 port forwards and whatnot. I hope that answers your question. And yeah, I think that's pretty much yeah. Nuno is saying like that's actually one of the very good challenge, uh case with multi-node on WSL2. So he is a WSL expert. And but I really like the initial idea of spreading the control plane and worker nodes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So next up, like um, so we we now know so where we are at now so we now know what K0s is uh, so it's zero frictionless and the work workload isolation is there control plane workload isolation is there we know what actually that means how that is happening the kubelet is not running and we know some some of the flow uh, or some of the defaults you have Calico uh, we have uh, the Escalite uh, we have uh, all the defaults and we have also add-ons for Helm chart and uh, the manifest that can be used to deploy uh, with default applications that people want to use before, you know, just after immediately creating the cluster, which is again awesome. Uh, so now the the, the I, I want you I want to put you in a little bit, you know, uh, kind of tense situation. Like, uh, how do you compare this to uh, K3s and other distributions? Like most of the time, even when I wrote the blog, the first thing that came into my mind is like, you know. Uh, would the comparison between K0s and K3s? I actually did uh, some time back uh, that in the blog, but I want to hear like what is the comparison uh, from K3s and K3s? How they complement each other? How they are uh, kind of different from each other? And how the K0s is moving uh, ahead, like uh, with with their own uh, vision? All right. So we have actually a couple of couple of bullets here. Actually, kind of. Collecting the differentiators, not not uh, directly towards K3s, because we have also uh, similarities with with K3s. But uh, but in general, so first of all, the K0 is a single binary distribution. Actually, K3s is also also single binary, so it's a similarity to to, to that one, but also a differentiator to to towards uh, many other other distros. So this is one of the, I think, a key key benefit in all in all in, in both K, K0s and K3s. But then the control plane isolation, I think this one is, uh, we can call it a, a unique feature in the, in the K0s. 
at least I'm not aware of any any distros actually implementing it in in the isolation part in in this way than than what we do. And then the third one here is is actually that we have this um, automatically scalable uh, solution from single node to multi node, including the high availability clusters. So when you use this single single uh, parameter to to start k zeros, what happens is that k zeros actually automatically disables these processes that are not needed for for multi node clusters like this worker controller connectivity or this join um, control API or then this controller leader election. So we actually automatically do a couple of things there to, to make the cluster run very efficient for the single node, but also in the in the multi-node, it's the it's the automatically scalable control plane part. So I think that, that the scalability is quite advanced feature, but not really know if there are other distros doing doing it in the same way, but uh, but I still call it the differentiator here. Yeah, I think and, that's, and, that's yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do 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 add to the single binary thing. So so yeah. Although although K three S is 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 pretty similar in 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 many aspects. Like like for example in the single binary approach, uh, it's actually implemented quite differently in K zero S and K three S. It's mentioned mentioned K zero S and K three S in the same sentence will twist your tongue. Always, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but it, the, the implementation is actually very, very, very different. So, where where K three S bundles everything in as as compiled in, like like compiled in as as codependencies into the into the binary, uh, we actually embed the the Kubernetes binaries as such. So, so if you if you actually go and and look into the into the K zero S binary, you'll see that uh, we actually catenate the, the the Kubernetes and other etcd and other whatnot needed binaries as a as a binary. So it's 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 sort of a like a self-extracting binary in a sense. So the implementation is very different. Yeah, I think those are very much you know kind of honest uh, differentiators uh, with respect to all the other distros because there's not only K3s, there are other Kubernetes distributions. Um, I wanted to bring that because that's that's something very important for the community because community has been using K3s and uh, uh, they have been using other distributions uh, as well. So yeah, single binary distribution applies to other distributions for sure. And just like uh, UC mentioned, uh, there is a kind of difference between single binary, how it is implemented in K3s and how it is implemented in K0s. So thanks for that, that point as well. And yeah, like I said, I really like the control plane isolation feature. This is, I, I also don't think uh, that I have seen that in any other distribution. So that's pretty cool and pretty neat feature that is implemented. And uh, yeah, automatic scalable for single node to multi node. Uh, so uh, so that's that's something cool. I haven't done that, but uh, if you are saying, then I agree. Uh, so that's that's also something like uh, which is which is good thing. Uh, so highly available clusters are something people look for when they obviously when they are working with with they start working with Kubernetes and they want to uh, roll out their workloads in production. So uh, I think with this uh, uh, maybe. I can ask two things basically. Uh, maybe we want to do the demo first, or maybe the checklist first. We could, uh, uh, I think we can we we can have a quick look on 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 some of the some of the topics in the in the checklist because I'm going to refer to to that list in as as part of the demo. So so uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I wanted to just check yeah. on that. Yeah. Maybe I I have. I actually forgot one uh, differentiator was was also these system requirements and just quickly oh. that uh, that we and I know is it a real differentiator but the K zeros is I would say it's among the lightest cube distros in terms of needed to CPU memory and disk. There are others also which are I think as light as as K zeros but among them lightest and what we have also in the hardware side gpu support side we support x86 and the, the arm arm processors but uh, yeah, yeah that's also one one okay. view but then, and one question is like uh, let's take a quick one uh k0s has automatic deployment go yaml files uh i don't know what 
what is meant I by think, go, uh, go YAML files, but 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 YAML manifests in general, yes. YAML. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. In general, yes. And uh, uh, I was just trying. So there, there was some kind of performance benchmark that was recently posted on on Twitter or somewhere. I can't remember that. Uh, I was trying to find it, but I think that that was a good performance benchmark that was there. Uh, that uh, with respect to K0s, uh, showing good kind of performance uh, over over the other distribution. So which was uh, quite impactful. Um, so I, I'll I'll see if I'm able to find that tweet. I'll I'll just post the link. So yeah, uh, you see, you want to share the screen? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me try to find the correct button. Why is this always hard? Technology is always hard. Can you can you see my screen? Yeah, I was just reading a new nose comment, so I'll I'll just share. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, a production checklist is something, something like, like uh, it. Of course, it's it's always different from organization to organization, and 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 depends a lot on the infrastructure you use and whatnot. So, so I I, I just tried to collect some of the some of the the kind of uh, uh, some some of the topics that are are at least somehow unique to K zeros. And 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 because if we if we dive into the production checklist for any infrastructure or Kubernetes in general, then we'll be on on the live stream still like in until next week or something. So, I mean, of course, you, f first of all, you, you you have to think that whether 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 you need high availability for your for your control plane on the cluster and and high availability in general. So, so if you're if you're running like like random test clusters. Some development clusters, then probably you don't need you don't need to spend extra money and effort on that. Uh, you 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 definitely have to have to think about the storage for your applications because as 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 Miko explained, K zeros is is really like bare bones stuff. So we don't we don't bundle any storage solution into the picture. So you have to you 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 have to select that the one that fits your your requirements and 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 your needs. Uh, Role-based access control, of course, this is this is pretty common for any any distribution for Kubernetes. So, so the the, the distribution comes with pretty bare bones, plain minimum set of rules. So you have to adapt and 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 adapt to your organization and your needs, of course. Uh, like I mentioned in my in my talk on KubeCon about the, these different authentication methods on on Kubernetes. So so you probably want in production like environments you you probably want to tie it into a, a oidc provider of some sorts so that you have a centralized place for the authentication for your cluster and of course these are these are things that that uh, k zeros and 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 basically no other cube distro can actually configure and and, and figure out by itself so somebody has to tell that okay we are using that oidc provider here's the parameters to connect to and and, and use and 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 same same goes for audit logs, which I'm I'm I'll I'll, I'll show a way how to how to actually configure the audit logs in 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 K zeros in the in the demo. So, so basically, um, I wanted to ask like what what storage solutions uh, is is kind of recommended? Like I know there are plenty, and even for the backup restore. So how how we can backup and restore? You know, K zeros. Like yeah. we have Valero, mm -hmm. we have we have Valero that we can you know uh, directly use with Kubernetes. Uh, but uh, that does not work with all Kubernetes distributions. So since it's a different kind of a distribution implemented in a different way, so how would you define the backup and recovery strategy? All right. So so what we what we provide on 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 K zeros itself is is this sort of a disaster recovery mode for the control plane. So you you can actually go to the go to the controller node, use the same K zeros binary that you have to run it, everything. You can say that okay, K zeros backup. And it'll take a snapshot on the control plane and 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 spit out a a basically a tarball for you, and then you can shove shove the the tarball into S3 or whatever storage you you use for your backups, and then 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 you can say that they they take the existing backup and restore a a, a backup to a a new cluster if you need. Hmm. 
And what comes to what comes to storage, we have a uh, we have a tutorial as part of the Casey Rules documentation for for deploying uh, safe storage with Rook. So if you need the data replication and fault tolerant uh, storage, then this one runs and installs easily for Casey Rules. And we have also been using, for example, Open EBS. But uh, it, it really depends on the on the use case that what storage solution you you want to install with uh, with your cube cluster. So that's that's the reason we don't include just one, but trying to kind of create the freedom that it's very easy to to select what you need and then just deploy that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, just just uh, you know another plug like. Uh, you talked about open ebs so if anybody wants to learn about open ebs monday coming monday i'm having a stream on open ebs so yeah, right. like in, yeah. in the cloud ecosystem all things are connected you know that yeah so, yeah <laughs> but that was that that was not a paid plug <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and i think that's really cool i mean i like the backup thing because uh, you can you know you can schedule a cron job or you can schedule a kind of job that just runs your kzus backup and then spits out the tarball to uh, the your s3 bucket so i think that's a very good plan that that anyone can implement with basic uh, basic scripting itself yep. so you don't need fancy uh, fancy stuff or fancy tooling for that so yep. i mean that's, absolutely that's pretty cool Yep, but 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 of course it it still doesn't rule out this this more sophisticated application level backup stuff like Velero for example or or anything else. So so uh, uh, as as K zero is pure upstream Kubernetes, all of those tools should work. Of course, we as the core team on working on K zeros, of course we don't have the bandwidth to to test every single thing out there. So so uh, if somebody finds out that that's something doesn't work then shout out in 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 github issues and and somebody will will take a look if there's something we can fix on k0's side cool i think um, uh, people who are watching they they get some idea like uh, if you want to blog out something try out velero for for k0s and see how it works what doesn't work let let the yep. team know what doesn't work so that it gets fixed because if you are planning to use case us then definitely uh, you would be needing all the features and if you are well versed with velero so uh, make make these issues so that it can be fixed yep exactly yeah. exactly sounds very exactly good. all right so maybe the the time is running fast always when you're having fun so maybe yeah. maybe i'll jump demo to time. the actual demo time and and of course as usual it's a live demo so be warned let's hope that i don't mm. burn the burn the the carpet here or anything so uh i'm 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 using i'm using terraform as the infra provider or or the infrastructural tooling and i'm using hetzner as the cloud provider just to spin up few vms and 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 whatnot but but uh uh let me let me push terraform to apply the stuff yeah, 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 I trust it. This is one thing, and, and, and this is again not a not a paid plug. I'm actually paying Hetzner quite a bit, so <laughs> so uh, Hetzner is cool cool because it's it's like super fast. The the VMs and, and load balancers and everything get up in like like less than 20 seconds. So but if we if we look at the output, so uh, what I what I actually created is is basically like like uh, three controller nodes, three worker nodes, and then I'll I'll it 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 basically Terraform is spitting me out a a YAML, which I'm gonna then feed into a tool called K0 CTL, which is like a command line tool to automate the setup on over these multiple nodes. So of course I could I could SSH in to each of the nodes, download the K0s binary and run it and whatnot, but but we I mean, it gets boring after the second node already. So we we developed this this case zero CTL tool just to just to make it make it super easy and 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 whatnot. So so uh, there's a load balancer also created for me. So in the configuration, what I what I need to say to K0 is that okay, the external address to the control plane is the the load balancer address. So. What what that'll actually do is is it 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 automatically makes K zeros to configure all the kubelets, uh, all the kube proxies and, and other components that talk directly to the API 
to actually connect to the API through this load balancer address. And 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 then for the for the audit log, so so basically for all the all the Kubernetes components in the configuration, we support these extra args uh, mappings. So so basically you can feed in any any extra arguments for basically any any Kubernetes components. So we can actually actually leverage these extra args to pass in the audit log related configurations. Uh, in this example, I just have a one sample audit policy uh, that just like like super simple version of the audit policy, basically saying that okay, let's log these audit lines and 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 what or audit entries and whatnot, and then let's push it to the to the warlock cube audit and audit log. Of course, when thinking about production again, we have to think that okay, where do we actually want to store the audit logs? Because it's it's kind of sort of pointless if you have it only sitting on the same node. So you have to have some sort of a thing somewhere that actually collects this. But that's of course then highly dependent on your infrastructure, what what tools you you use for for this sort of information, whether you store it on on like Elk stack or or whether you have some cloud service where you can shove logs into and and whatnot. As Miko mentioned, we, we support these this, uh, Helm charts as extensions. So what you can also already tell in the in the in the K0 configuration that okay, let's let's install these charts out of the box. And in this example, I'm I'm just using traffic as an as an example and and that's about it. Just the usual usual helm helm stuff that you that you always need. Uh, all right, let's apply. Uh, so the the Gazer tool is 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 actually actually implemented in a in a in in like like uh, the, the the automation in mind. So in this case, we can actually actually take the output from Terraform and then feed it directly into the into the Gazer CTL. Which which makes it like like super easily scriptable and 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 then you can like have the Terraform stuff and 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 the basic case your CTL tooling for example as part of your CI workflows for these infrastructure level things and whatnot. So it'll actually actually connect with uh, with all the all the nodes that I've specified in the YAML and and then goes and installs the controllers first joins another controller, joins the third controller, and after everything is fine and dandy, everything's green, then it moves on to the moves on to the workers. So but this is this is quite typical what you would do with the, with with many many other distros too. So so uh cool. So we are waiting for the K0S service to start. Um, do you have any yep. questions? Please let us know in the comments so that we can keep going. Yeah, but yeah I think it's, it's pretty neat, like the more automation. I mean, it, it gives power to the, you know, uh, more power to the developers for, for the automation stuff that can be done. And the K0S cuttle or CTL, whatever you pronounce, so you can, uh, have uh, the config file directly applied, uh, applied, and you can take that from the output of the Terraform, which which was just demoed uh, a few few seconds yep. back. So I think that's that's pretty neat, and it's it's super simple rather than just SSHing into the uh, the nodes and and then downloading the and doing the boring way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one 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 reason why we why we did this specific tool because I mean, on the other hand, we have a lot of these these like general purpose configuration management stuff like Ansible's and chefs and and puppets and whatnot. So so, but but in many of those tools, it's it's actually super difficult to do like rolling upgrades where you do like controlled rolling upgrades like where you have to do train node and update and and whatnot. Those are actually quite hard with tools like Ansible and 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 others. Or at least where in the past I haven't been using those actually in in in, in recent years anymore. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and and just a quick question: like uh, the extension part can also be used as uh, uh, KZS Cuttle config file. Yes, yes. So if I if I actually switch to the well, let me let me do it this way. So I'll actually 
paste it to k0ctl.yaml. Let me open the YAML here. So if we look at this, and, and, and th this is annoying because the, the Terraform uses this quod quoted way of, of YAMLifying everything. So so if I scroll to the K0s part, so basically this, this K0s config, whatever is under the config key in, in K0s cuddle, YAML file is actually fed into the K0's controller process as is, pretty much. So you can, but whatever K0's controllers are able to read in, you can feed in through the, through the K0's cuddle file. Yep, I hope that answers. So I think we got the cluster running, right? Yep. Yep. Let's grab the cube config out of there and put it somewhere. Cube k zeros demo dot conf. Export cube. Anybody else have the same problem that I do that that working with computers would be a lot easier if you don't make to so many typos. Explorer. Hmm. It's Friday. Yeah. Kubectl get node. Do we have a demo effect? No, the first call always. The, the, the first call always takes a bit because the, the the load balancer that I've provisioned on the Hetzner side is like fully cold in a way, so it hasn't doesn't have the the active connections yet. So, or that's my assumption at least. Let's put it that way. And 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 this is basically basically if we if we look at the nodes, so so. There's, there's three controllers, but I don't see these as the as the, on the on the node list at all. So, yeah, they are completely isolated. So basically, yep. you see what uh, and where your workloads will actually run. Yep, exactly, exactly. But but, but then again, what you get out of box is is uh, Kubernetes still. So after after this point, it's 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 like working with with any Kubernetes, so so uh, it's standard vanilla Kubernetes. Yeah, that is. I think that is pretty neat. Uh, so you can you can basically grab the the Terraform output uh, config file. You can use uh, the the very simple tool that is that uh, the team has built K zero S Cuttle to apply that config file, and you can use all the extension, all the add ons. I saw the Helm chart of traffic was there. And uh, uh, so you had all these things that pre-installed will be coming in the cluster. So and the control planes are isolated. So you get though there are three masters and three workers, but uh, you see like when you do the kubectl get nodes. So you see the nodes where your workloads will be scheduling. So yep. I think that's that's pretty cool. And uh, the I would like to just uh, you know point on the production checklist. So I think production checklist is important because uh, when see you can. You can start small, but that easily scales up very quickly when you are, you know, working with Kubernetes. So uh, you can start small and not taking all those considerations in beginning, and then in the end, it becomes a pain to rework on most of the things. So I think uh, the, the the things has to be like the security aspect, uh, the monitoring aspect, the auditing aspects, the backup, disaster recovery aspect. They have to be taken care uh, from the beginning. Even if yep. you are working as, as, a, as a kind of a beginning uh, business or you are working as a startup or you are a mid-size or enterprise, obviously they have to. So make sure you are uh, you know, uh, thinking of that particular checklist where you are always thinking about the backup, restore, auditing, security, monitoring, all these pieces have to be taken care and no distribution to be very honest, even the plain Kubernetes provide them out of the box. So you have to implement some sort of tooling 
uh, that yep. that mm. does help. Yep. But definitely, like KC OS is is uh, giving you some something which is like the backup is there, so you have at least a control plane backup. Then you can have external Valero that you can test if things work, and and obviously the KC OS team will help you uh, in in making that work. So yep. I think Absolutely. that's pretty important. That's pretty important aspects. And uh, uh, now I I really want to touch on like anything we have in the demo left or or we can go over the next. Uh, we can we can we can, we can go over. So so okay. un unless there's any any specific things that that somebody somebody wants to see. So I see all positive positive um, uh, you know comments like the KZ Rescue is really cool yep. and uh, you know uh, the. Uh, your uh, great insights on cases, so I think that that is itself uh, shows the uh, yep. the liking. Yeah, one, one 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 point I want to make this this Terraform output to K zero is kernel. Yes, it's really cool, but it's it, it doesn't have to be Terraform. It can be anything, anything yep. that can spit out YAML, which is basically like like all the all the all the tooling nowadays. So so you can say say you say you're running in a in a more like a legacy type of environment where where you have uh where you have like some inventory for for your computers that you want to use in some some legacy system somewhere just write a script that imports stuff from there and spits out yaml and you're good to go yep and basically you get all the all the scripting and the automation power you can create your scripts to generate that yaml and then you can just supply it to your case yep. cdl it can be any tooling or your custom scripts or anything Yep, exactly, exactly. So, uh, Miko and and you see like uh, there's a very in important aspects on on the live streams that I always do, uh, which is the community aspect and which is really important. Like uh, because we have we cover almost you know uh, from the beginning to the demo production checklist everything the differences how it works architecture and and whatnot. Uh, we give enough information for the folks to understand it and try it out when they go back. And you know, then then write obviously the blogs as a hobbyist on even apply it at their work for POCs. Now the mm -hmm. important part is how the community can get involved. So what are the different ways they can reach out to you? How they can get involved and how they can help you improving uh, the product and your vision for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should I start maybe or? Yeah, go ahead. I think the 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 main. Uh, page for for the project is in is the github page so there we have the all the issue list and, and uh, very interesting discussions and 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 all the all the prs and all the code of course so that's the that's the key place to have the let's say the the important things and important changes and then of course on in addition to that one we have the slack channel actually it's a shared slack channel with the with the lens development team but but that's then for the for the more informal discussions but uh, but i think the, all the users there will get quite 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 the fast support and other other users are helping or then someone from our team will will help in in some issues and or you see is helping there quite a lot so yeah, that's the that's those two two other I think the key channels and and of course the feedback and and the contributions from the community is very very much valued always. So. Yeah, and 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 like as I mentioned, the, the one one of the one of the key things is is for example these different sort of uh, add-ons like for the for the clusters like Valero, which we which we've been mentioning a couple of times. So if 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 something something on on that side doesn't work with uh, with K zero, then we we appreciate the feedback and 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 the 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 K zero code base is actually not that big. So so it should be for at, at least for people who are more familiar with Kubernetes, it should be pretty pretty easy to figure out that that okay in which part of the code we might need some. Kubernetes flags or some additional settings or or something and and so as as with any open source project so we of course welcome both issues and 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 even better PRs to to fix those. Mm. And maybe one more thing for the extension. So we have actually a separate uh, a part in our documentation called examples, and there we have this example uh, extension. So installation guides or those things and and yeah those are we are very much welcoming everyone to when they install something and okay this these are the needed steps so to write a couple of lines and put the steps down and it can be published to the docs and made available for everyone 
Yep, sorry, was finding the mute button, unmute button. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, so this is pretty uh, good. I think we had the community aspect cleared very good. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, join the Slack channel for the uh, lens. I will definitely put that in the YouTube description when the video is up. And obviously, I'll divide it into chapters as well because we discussed a lot of topics. Uh, so uh, I think that's that's pretty much it. And we have we have covered almost all the things. Uh, now, just we'll do uh, you know a quick giveaway that we promised to the folks. So uh, I'll just export uh, the form as the Excel sheet. And yeah, so we have around 35 responses. So you can pick uh, three uh, different numbers and let me know. Uh, so I will pick, I mean, I'll just announce the name. So first number would be, you have to pick from one to 35. All right, so first one, uh, 21. 21, so 21 is Nuno. So my friend and uh, he has been, always there with me always in my support as well so uh, congratulations nuno uh you have won the first one the lens hoodie uh that will be coming your way uh second one uh seven seven is i don't know how to pronounce that uh puna puna rupesh puna rupesh kaushik so I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. So Puna Rupesh Kaushik, uh, you are the you are the second winner. I, uh, if you are there in the uh, chat, you can just say you won. Anyways, we have the contact information. So the third one. Let's uh, take uh, nineteen. Nineteen is uh, Kedar Kedar Nath uh, Bel Belavankani. So Kedar Nath basically. Uh, so Kedar Nath, you are the third uh, third winner. And um, yeah, so congratulations to Nuno uh, and Kedarnath and uh, Rupesh for winning uh, the uh, swags. And uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed the stream as well. Obviously, I see a lot of folks who are who have enjoyed the stream. Uh, so this is just a, you know a kind of um, uh, token of love that uh, these people have given us. So uh, the dense team and the K zero S have collectively uh, thought of you know uh, giving out something as well with learning. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you check out both the products, which are awesome and open source, where you can contribute a lot. So definitely do that. Uh, and whenever you write the blogs or you know uh, write anything, video tutorial, just tag tag them on Twitter. Both both are there. Uh, so uh, K Zero S Project and uh, K Eight Lens, both of these are there at the Twitter handle. So make sure you tag them, and you can tag me as well. And uh, we would like to uh, see what all the things you want to try with K Zero S. I think the project project has its own uh, place in the in the Kubernetes distribution ecosystem. Uh, though there was K Three S, but we have seen like what all features it brings on the table, and it has proved its significance that it uh, deserved to exist and grow. Uh, so I think yep. that. Did my computer freeze or somebody else's? No, I'm still here, but uh, can't okay. hear Siam anymore. What about the live stream? Is it still on or so I'm reconnecting? Still... Yeah. Wonders. Yeah, of some All right. Okay. Yeah. Great to you. <laughs> All right. Now we're back. Yeah. I, I, I was for a while like. <laughs> cool. Tick, tick, uh, tick. <laughs> yeah. All right. Excellent. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. We are here. Uh, okay, live is on. Same is back. Cool. Yeah, there was some network issue, so I was just saying bye. I, I didn't know that whether it's reaching to you people or not. So, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. right. So blogs you. Thank you. All blogs. Yeah. Blogs are coming soon. Uh, Miko and UC. And uh, uh, thanks a lot for the session. Thank you for being uh, spending time with uh, with the session and uh, giving the swags and everything. The demo went fine, and and all the answers you answered patiently. It is. It was a superb session. I'll put I definitely divide it into chapters and thank you all for joining in. Tune in uh, for, on Monday for the next stream and uh, uh, thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice Bye. weekend, everyone.